Best of r slash tales from tech support episode 69. Subscribe for Reddit videos daily. I've been reading for a while, but couldn't come up with a good story to post that wouldn't potentially cause me issues in my current job. A few days back I was talking with someone and the story from my university days came to mind, and I figured it might get a few chuckles here. Background. Dollar sign me equals student a slash v tech at a university at the time. Dollar sign PT equals psych teacher that called with an issue. The job I was doing was basic A slash V tech at a university campus. Deliver cards around with projectors or TVs to classrooms right before the start of a class. Plug them in and make sure they work. Then go to the next delivery slash pickup. Some rooms were being wired for their own projectors slash TVs with access via a podium. We only supported these if someone had an issue. We had a dedicated tech group that dealt with real problems. But we were all expected to do first line troubleshooting on the spot. I'm new to this job because getting in basically required a referral from someone else and somebody graduating. But I'm an upper level tech major, CS slash IT. So I'm a significant cut above the average for someone just starting out in the role. This job was considered amazing because you get paid for hours of work. But 40 minutes of every hour you had assigned was typically spent in the break room, hanging out or doing homework. Another important note, this was a STEM focused school. We had other programs, some very well funded thanks to local businesses throwing money at them predominantly around the fine arts, but the majority of the funding slash focus went to the engineering, computing, and science colleges at this point. While degrees were offered in the liberal arts, they were there because the higher ups wanted to make sure as techies were well rounded and they realized that they could offer the degrees for no real additive cost, so why not do it? Onto the story. It's the beginning of the summer session. First day of classes. I wrap up my handful of deliveries quickly and drop back to the office, where they immediately turned me back to go to the psych building, as a teacher is having issues getting a projector to turn on so that she can play a DVD. She is in one of the rooms that was wired up the previous summer to be a smart room a ceiling mounted projector connected to a podium with multiple laptop input options, a DVD player, and a VHS player. I roll in and it turns out this is actually a psychology course around technology one of a few options in the required curriculum for most technology majors at the school, and goes into how we interact with technology from a societal perspective in some pretty interesting ways. The teacher points to the podium and keeps talking to the class while I get to work doing troubleshooting 101 is it turned on, is it plugged in, etc. Dollar sign PT to class. C. This is why I don't trust technology, it always fails on you. With this statement, the classroom, made up primarily of CS slash IT slash engineering students just filling out their liberal arts requirements, starts wishing that they had chosen a different teacher for this class. I work through troubleshooting and find that the projector power switch on the top of the podium is in the very well labeled off position. I decide that this is a major contributing factor to the projector not powering up and move it to the on position, whereupon dollar sign PT is greeted with blinding light from the projector almost perfectly in front of her. I make sure that the projector boots, and the DVD she has on the podium plays in the mounted DVD player, then go to take my leave so that she can get on with her lesson plan. Total time in room, 3 minutes, most of which was the projector's slow boot time. Dollar sign me, you're all set, let us know if you have any other problems. Dollar sign PT. Like I said, class, this is why you don't rely on technology. Now, what was wrong with it? At this point, I'm stuck. She's making no move to see anything, so I can't just point at things and say that they need to be in this configuration. I need to be honest with her, and I don't want her to call us every time she can't figure out how to flip a switch to the on position. So I decide that if she put me in a bad spot then she gets to deal with the consequences. Dollar sign me. The switch labeled projector needs to be in the on position. Dollar sign me exit. Stage right. Epilogue. I told my boss what happened and he cracked up. He said she deserved it for trying to put the spotlight on our unreliable technology and staff. So there was no blowback on me for not being able to discreetly handle it. Which I really, really wanted to. But she gave me no real choice. I also ran into an acquaintance that was in the class a few weeks later. And he said she spent about 10 minutes staring at it before calling, and that throughout the class she was constantly bad-mouthing technology while ignoring very obvious, 
intuitive solutions to the point that nobody in class cared what she said anymore as she was obviously unfit to discuss the subject material. A pity, really, because my version of the class, taken a few years prior with a completely different teacher, was actually quite good and led to me looking at technology a bit differently. Thank you. Next. So this older, early 60s, sales guy calls my direct line the other morning from some location at an event set up, conference, trade show. I don't know and I care significantly less. He's not supposed to call me directly. I'm actually the IT manager. He's supposed to call the help desk line, but he's flustered and he knows my number. Let's call him Phil. Phil, hey, I'm here at, don't care, and I'm trying to get set up but I left my Mifi back at the hotel. I don't know if there is any public internet. What can I do? Me, well, your company phone has a hotspot feature so you can't use it as a hotspot, just like a Mifi. I then spend a few moments talking him through enabling it and so forth. He said he'd get back with me if there were any problems. Five minutes later I get a Skype IM. Phil, via Skype IM, are you getting this? Me, via Skype IM, getting what? Phil, via Skype IM, I'm sending you a Skype message to see if the connection is working. Me, via Skype IM, huh, not seeing anything Phil. Phil, via Skype IM, something's isn't working, I'll call you back. Pause. Phil. Via Skype I am. A hole. Thank you. Next. First time poster and on mobile. Sorry if the formatting is weird. Dollar sign me equals me. Dollar sign user equals normal user. Dollar sign HP equals hole puncher. Quick one for your folks but I think you might like it. At my location we have badges for accessing doors and computers. Occasionally we have to replace them and that was the case today for dollar sign user. For this user she gets two badges, one for the door slash computer and one to indicate her title. The title badge is pretty big and hard to put in the plastic sleeves. Per usual for new badges I ran through the badge setup and updated the necessary systems to provide access on the new badge. Then I walked over to dollar sign user. Dollar sign me. Hey dollar sign user. Here's your new badges. Let me take your old one and we'll be all set dollar sign user. Hey thanks. Dollar sign HP, let me see your badges, I'll make it easier to put in the sleeve. Dollar sign user and dollar sign me both think, hey, they're probably going to trim the bigger title badge because it's inert. No harm no foul. And I start going over the badge access with dollar sign user for a moment. Dollar sign HP, proceeds to put a hole punch in the middle of the door slash computer badge. Dollar sign user and dollar sign me, what? We tested immediately on a nearby computer, no reaction. Test on a door, no reaction. Dollar sign me, I'll go set up a new access badge. Here's your old one dollar sign user. Thanks. It turns out dollar sign HP had done something similar to a different user and my guess is she missed the refit ship that time. I'm thinking of sending an all user email stating that badges from IT are not to be trimmed or adjusted in any way. Thank you. Next. I work at a small IT business in the Netherlands. We provide services to other businesses such as email migrations, network rollouts and regular end user help desk. Meet Ms. Customer, a kind old woman who has recently started developing signs of dementia. Something to note is that customer has started getting incredibly paranoid because of the dementia. I get a call from customer, and she states that the hackers broke her printer again. Customer also has mobility issues and since we're a small company with not a lot of people it's not possible for me to go over to said customer. After spending upwards of 10 minutes explaining how Team Viewer works, I get access to her computer. I take a look. We always teach our older customers Windows faxing and scanning because it's a pretty good all-in-one solution to dealing with different brands of printers. It's easy to use so we just teach them how to use it and then place a shortcut icon on their desktop. She had accidentally dragged the icon into some document folder and therefore she could no longer print or scan. I place the icon back on the desktop and explain what went wrong. She vehemently denies placing the icon in the folder and claims it just disappeared. I agree with her and tell her Windows just does that sometimes. No real use in arguing something so small and confirm the problem has been solved. She scans a document and agrees it has been fixed. I then place the team viewer eggs on her desktop and call it remote help. 
I do this so I don't have to go through the painstaking process of directing her to the team viewer website again. The very second she sees a team viewer icon appear on her desktop, her tone shifts. Her, what is that? Me, it's an icon for the program we're using right now so I can more easily help you in the future. Whenever you need my help, you can just call me and click this icon. Her, you're one of them, aren't you? Referring to the hackers who keep breaking her computer. Me, excuse em. She hung up. I just sat there, wondering how the conversation could take such a drastic turn. I tried to call her back, but she doesn't pick up. Told my boss, said it's a common thing with this customer and that she'll forget all about this conversation in a day. Spent the rest of the day feeling bad for scaring this woman. Thank you. Next. I just got my first job ever. Of course, it's at a telco, as T1 tech support in an Eastern European country. Freshly out of training, ready to tackle on the world. And I get this crap. User. Hello. I have some issues with my internet. I cannot connect to it. Me. Hello. Can you give me a phone number, a billing code or a personal code? User. Sure, here's my phone number, phone number, me, alright, just a few moments to check what services are on your contract. Those moments turned into several minutes of me squinting at the screen. This person had an internet service installed, but instead of a multitude of buttons and data about the service, I just get the string GSM net business. I tell my client that I need to do some additional checks and I put them on hold as I rush to my boss to ask him what I am dealing with. Me, boss, I have a client whose internet's not working. The database just spits out GSM net business and nothing else. But do, he scoots his chair at my desk to see what's happening, and he just sits there silent. Boss, I don't know what's that. Me, internally screaming, should I panic? This wasn't in the training material. Boss, we'll panic together once I check what's happening. If that was supposed to make me feel better, it didn't. Here I am, a total tech support noob, taking his third call ever, facing something that not even my boss dealt with before. Did I mention that I panic easily? Because I totally felt the need to panic. I return to my client and pretend to do some settings remotely while my boss sends calls and emails up the corporate chain. Eventually I hear a no. Alright, I got it. And my boss scoots back to my desk. Boss, business internet modem. Works using GSM. It shouldn't have been released this year, but corporate decided it should anyway. No documentation on it whatsoever because of that, and database barely has any data about it. Oh, by the way, there's also a VoIP plan using this modem. I have a headache but let's sort out this client. He then scribbles quickly a speech for me to recite to my client while he opens a ticket and sends it to the GSM team to deal with. Client ends the call happily while I sit there wondering. Boss, by the way, this is the first of many calls to come. I got word that a pretty decent number of these modems weren't configured properly. Prepare for an angry wave of displeased accountants, since it's business we're talking here. He gets ready to leave. Me, um, you didn't tell me how I should handle these accountants. Boss, calm them down and escalate to GSM. I first needed to calm myself down. First day on the job and instead of simple have you tried turning it off and back on, I get in documented business modems. The next few days were great, queue filled to the brim, everyone complaining about their fancy GSM internet or business. One client took their modem at a cabin in the woods for some team building experiences and then screamed at my colleague. Apparently we were ruining his awesome activities because he had barely any signal. It didn't help that it's still winter. Fasapum. Thank you, next. Dollar sign boss, the boss. Newly promoted and eager to show off what he can do. He has often expressed his displacement with the laws in the country and not so much breaks them by accident as woefully ignores them because he can't be bothered to follow them and they are, in his opinion, just a hindrance and he could be so much more productive without them. Dollar sign me, me of course. Dollar sign new team lord, a brand new fresh team lord. Just promoted today and put in charge of project number 2. Dollar sign project number 1, our oldest project we have been supporting. I am by a technicality the most senior person of it because I have been working on it the longest and everyone else nope the fuck away. Might have been a good hint to take for me too. 
We are basically offering additional support for another IT company which is supporting another company in turn. Dollar sign project number 2, a new project where we offer support for an automobile company. We haven't received any training, but the people who wrote the contract insisted on a separate office because of data security and no one overhearing any internal security stuff that might come up during phone calls. Dollar sign user, a user that calls with a very specific old problem and ticket. Dollar sign link user, up to this day I still do not know who it is or what his role in the company is. English is not my first language, yada yada, not on mobile. This time it's not just one story, but there is also a final ending to this. Let's do this. Thank you. Next. Another story from my time as a cash register repair man back in the late 80s. We had one customer, a large market, that had a problem with one of their cash registers coming up short with regularity, usually in multiples of $20. The first few times they'd just discipline the cashier but eventually they figured out that it was happening to every cashier on that register. So they called me in to see if I could figure out what the problem was. So I get there and run the reports, do a few test transactions etc. Everything is fine. So then I get down under the counter to check the network connections and there I find it. Wedged in between the register stand and the counter is a price gun holster and in that is the most expensive mouse nest I have ever seen. This mouse had been sneaking up the cable run to the till. The hole it went in was just large enough for the cable and a small mouse to fit through and was located directly above the 20s tray. Going back through the register reports they had to be on the order of $300 worth of torn up 20s lining that nest. I put some aluminum tape over the hole and fished out the mouse nest and handed it over to the store manager. Amazingly he took it to the bank to get them exchanged. Apparently this is something the Federal Reserve will do for folks. Fortunately nobody got fired over this event and those who had been disciplined got apologies. Got to love family owned businesses.